morning, Mr. Paul Schooling. Thank you to sit by interview rather at the UK Ambassador's residence. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. So, firstly, I would like to listen your Myanmar's introduction. So you have learned. So, uh, well, all I can say to people watching is Mingla Bar. Um, I've had a fantastic time over the last week here. Um, it's been very personal to me, as well as looking at the future of the country, because my father was born here. Uh, my grandfather was born here in Mandalay in 1893 and brought up in Moulmein uh, before he moved to what was then Rangoon. Um, where, and my father was born here in the Dufferin Hospital um, and brought up and before he moved to the UK in eight, at age 18. And there have been some moments in my father's life and my, uh, the rest of my family's life that have actually coincided with really important moments of uh, Myanmar history, including when my father was walking past, back home from school, past the place where General Aung San was killed and the commotion and the aftermath of that with the police around when my father was aged just 13. And I don't think you would have understood or known at the time how important of an event that was for the country's history. If I start my question, this is very simple for you. So why will you be here in Myanmar? So I think you have there so many reasons in this time, at the time in Myanmar. Absolutely, I, I was delighted when uh, Benedict Rogers, who's been here a number of times, uh, asked me. Benedict works for Christian Solidarity Worldwide, a human rights and religious tolerance advocate. Um, and so he asked me to come because he knew I had a connection to, to, to Myanmar uh, and he works very much, very closely with this country. And I wanted to come not only because I've always wanted to be able to come to the place where my father was born and w which I feel f proud to, to have a connection to, but also because this is a hugely important time for the country. And so to come just at the end of the transition, after the, uh, the most amazing election, um, it's important for me to see what's going on, to offer any advice and support that I can do for local politicians, but also to, um, to see what more needs to be done, especially with, to do with the rule of law, to do with um, uh, human rights, to do with religious tolerance and ethnic conflict. Because, you know, although everybody's very excited, we've got to be cautious. You can't change the country in a day. And if I can just help in any small way, that's why I'm delighted to be here. The what you express, the rule of love, this what has lost in Myanmar for five decades, on this, so, for so far away. So, how do you think about of Myanmar rules of law at the previous times in that? So, Myanmar new governments that, that transform this rule of law in the, the concerning of the people. I think there are three things that need to be looked at in terms of um, regaining trust and regaining people's trust in law. Um, First of all, obviously the law itself needs to be uh, looked at, uh, in some cases re, uh, re, re, uh, started again, in other t cases improved, uh, including obviously the constitution, which I know is a controversial issue here. Um, because then people can know exactly what to expect, what is set out um, for them. Uh, the second thing is enforcement of law. So working uh, to, to make sure that the police um, no, they can't misinterpret the law to, to use, to, but there have been a number of people, there have been a number of famous cases that have reached the ears of, of us over in the West, where people have been arrested uh, on a charge that's, that's basically where someone, the police or someone has, has misused the law. And the third is uh, making sure that they, people get a fair hearing as well from judges. Because it's one thing to make sh to if you don't agree with a law, it's another thing that if you don't inter agree with how a law is interpreted, but if you cannot stand up in front of a judge, knowing that that judge will hear your uh, case, will hear your evidence in a free and fair and open way, no matter what your background, then you don't have a credible legal system. And I think all of those three things will take a lot of time to and a lot of effort to change, but they do need to change. Could you mention the uh, meanings of the rules of law followed by the uh, corporate good governance? Yes. 
Well, I think, you know, at the end of the day, you have, I, I'm a new MP as well. Um, the MPs uh, here have only really been sitting in the Latour for about 10 days or so. I've been sitting in the UK Parliament for 10 months, so still pretty new. Um, the difference being that I've actually walked into a Parliament where all the systems are hundreds of years old. So it means that the support people know exactly what they're doing and they can help settle me in and advise me how to go about uh, being a good politician. Not tell me what to do, the big difference, but advise me and show me how, how to do these sort of things. Um, at the moment here in, in, in the Luto and Nepidor and in the regions, the, the, the MPs are new, but also a lot of the support staff don't necessarily have that experience. And so a number of countries, including the UK, have offered a lot of support. The Speaker of the House of Commons is a big, big friend of, of Myanmar. He's been here a number of times and hosted Dorsu in the UK in 2012. He's offered people, he's had people come over here and they're still here now, um, helping train up the clerks, the support staff to be able to offer good, good, good experience. And that's really important. How would you say your Bama, Bami's heritage has affected your approach, the challenges of Myanmar faces? Well, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I can't pretend to be uh, an expert on Myanmar because just because I, my father was born here because the, the stories that I had, he, they didn't talk about all of the dark times of the country's history. They tended to focus on the good experience that they had, the wonderful childhood that they had growing up here. Um, but nonetheless, I am really proud of my, of, of my heritage. Uh, and that's meant that I wanted to read up and find out more. I wanted to visit here. Um, and I really do have a little bit of uh, Myanmar in my heart that, that makes me want, want to help, especially the Myanmar people because actually what this country is most remarkable for, although it's a beautiful country, is the peop people are wonderful. So, Myanmar is still living in the dark time. So, how do you think? So, how can Myanmar liberate from the dark times? From the dark times? Well, I think it, it, there's a massive expectation from the election in November, um, but we need to be cautious, and people need to make sure that they give their politicians a little bit of time and their support. So we need to build up the capacity of the members of parliament to make sure that they have all the tools that they need to do the job and become productive. They need the, to build up the skills and the experience through training and other things as well. Um, so the capability of doing these sort of things. The, uh, you need to have a clear vision of how you want to change the country. It's all very well saying, right, the country needs to change. How is it going to change? How, what you can actually do on a day-to-day -day basis? And they need to have the confidence to be able to change that as well. And that is with people helping them because Dorsu is one woman. She's a, an amazing woman, but she is only one woman. She can't do everything. The MPs can't do everything. A lot of the change, the positive change, will need to come from communities in the cities, the towns, the rural areas, the ethnic states. People need to take the lead from the new government, but... Democracy doesn't just start and end with one vote. Then everybody needs to play their part. So once you are where growing up, how do you view yourself? British, have Bamis. Did your Bamis heritage mean much when you were young? Was it something you became more conscious about as you grew up? Uh, I think, how do I describe it? It certainly was something that I grew, I, I was more conscious about when I was growing up, um, especially when I was getting involved in politics because I was reading more about world politics and obviously with a special interest in what was going on here. Um, I guess I described myself as uh, British to some people and uh, half Burmese or half Anglo Indian to others. So, uh, I'm a, because my grandmother was born in India, uh, my grandfather was born, as I say, in Mandalay, and so I'm a little bit of a mixture of, of, of everything. Growing up, my, my mother is English, whereas all my cousins, they, they, they have both Burmese parents. And so they probably ate more Bim, Burmese food than, than, than I did. They had bigger portions of Timin Letho and Moenga and Hinjo and things like that. But all of my family occasions, I loved eating all of those foods and Balachang sandwiches as well. <laughs> so the words your view is reconciliations in Myanmar. You mentioned Aung San Suji. So as your Myanmar heroes, I have learned about your interview in the 
Nimam Sanmedia. So the also Suji appears to be willing to forget the past. Some critics would like to see some current and former members of the previous military deterrent shift brought to court over what the alleged are crimes against humanity. Where do you stand and where does the old party parliamentary group of Obama stand on this issue? I think it's important to say at this stage when I'm talking about politics of the country, I'm very much speaking in a personal capacity. I can't speak on, but certainly I can't speak on the on behalf of the UK government. Um, I may be here in the ambassador's residence, but he, who's hosting me? But I'm, I'm, I can't speak on behalf of them. But from a personal point of view, I think um, you know there will need to be a long period of reconciliation. But you do need to be careful about um, reprisals and and looking back too far. Because I look at what's happened in Bangladesh, for example, uh, the neighbouring country. This was a country that came out of, uh, came into independence just over 40 years ago. And even now, there's a lot of mistrust between the main parties stemming back from that period of history. And what you don't want to be doing, although it's doing fantastically economically, culturally, and in many other ways, there is still a degree of resentment between certain groups. What you don't want to be doing here in Myanmar is 40 years later still being repeating, repeating history. So I would just err on the side of caution w w within that, whatever you choose to do. Can you tell us about your role in the co-chair of the All Party Parliamentary of Obama, Group of Obama? Yeah, this is a, um, we have a number of all party parliamentary groups in, in the UK, in the UK Parliament. On, every different subject. Every different country has one. Lots of different um, interests have one as well. And it's really a, an opportunity for groups of MPs who have a particular interest in a subject to get together and discuss them. And so I became co-chair pretty soon after I was elected, along with Baroness Kinnock, who I believe has been here a number of times, and a Labour MP, Rushnara Ali, who used to be a former International Development Minister as well. Um, what we've done at the moment is we work very closely with the Burma Campaign UK uh, and a number of uh, groups, um, civil society groups in, in the UK and interested people in the UK come to our meetings. And we have had updates from the ambassador when he's over in the, uh, in the UK. We've had up updates from the development, uh, international development, head of international development here went to tell us how our aid is being spent and we want to make sure it's going directly to the people that most need it. What I want to be able to do over the next few months though is to attract more MPs, more members and really uh, do something more practical than just receiving updates. Does this turn on Myanmar differ from the conservative government's approach? Um, I don't think there is one stance that the group takes particularly. Um, uh, the Burma Campaign UK, who provides the support and assistance, has a, um, a probably a more aggressive stance, I suppose, in terms of human rights and actually wanting to push a little bit further. Whereas um, I, I would say that the UK government um, is keen to make sure that human rights is absolutely at the top of the agenda, but we are not here, and I totally agree, I'm not here, uh, uh, even at a personal level, we're not here to tell Myanmar what to do. We're only here to offer advice and support. You've elected your politicians, you've elected Dorsu to, to bring in change and to deliver that change. And it's important that she's able to have the space to be able to do that without Britain say, standing behind the old colonial power saying, you know, we know best. We don't. You, you know best in your country but we can, we can offer any advice and support we can. What is the UK government position in Myanmar democratic transition? Well, again, as I say, uh, you know, I, I, I won't speak on behalf of the, the UK government, but from what I see, they're um, very supportive of the, um, uh, of, of the elections and, and pleased that actually, um, although the, the elections were far from perfect, they, it was clear that people's voices were heard. It's clear that there was a, uh, a very clear result. Um, and uh, 
uh, you know, the, the will of the people can now be um, pushed through in terms of reform and change. But it's at the stage the UK government and, and as a number of countries around the world, as I say, are looking on with interest, offering support as well, but not really wanting to, not wanting, certainly not wanting to impose anything, but just being a critical friend. Sam Ambrose were raised when the UK government initiated a program made to train the Myanmar military officers. As you know, the Tamara does not have the best reputation in certain cycles. Can you give us some insight into this program made? Should credits be concerned? I think the, the thing is with um, uh, uh, the government has been opening up for a number of years. This is, we've just had a really pivotal moment with this election in November. But the foundations of being able to get to this point have been over the last few years, in, in the last Latour as well. And so I think um, the, gov the government, the UK government, will, be, will have been looking at all of these um, situations and how they can help and support without treading on toes. Um, but that's engaging with both sides because the military um, naturally wouldn't have given up power lightly. So it's important that we speak to, to both, obviously, Dorsu, but also keep, keep um, correspondence and keep contact with the military. As you already know, Myanmar moving forward for the democratic transition is transforming its political backstage to the reform for social economy and the politics, something like that. So I have learned about your knowledge sharing yesterday in the British Council. Myanmar members of parliament have sacrificed. It's not different, uh, so different from the UK. Yeah. So, so, so uh, the, what's the distinguish between uh, the Myanmar members of parliament and the UK members of parliament in terms of the uh, accountability, capability, and something like that? Well, there's a huge difference in where they've come, come from. Um, most of them have been to prison for long, long time. So, you know, that is a huge amount of commitment. Whereas I've worked um, incredibly hard to get myself elected, um, it's nothing compared to the struggle, or the fight, that um, and the sacrifice that so many people who who have been activists for a number of years or are now MPs, so a personal sacrifice that for their families as well. Um, in terms of where they go now, their capabilities now, I think it's really important that they get the, uh, as I say, they get the support that they that they um, that they can and grab every bit of support that they can, so that they can draft good laws. Um, they need to know how to scrutinise laws as well. They need to be able to uh, look at a, a bit of legislation and ask the right questions. They don't necessarily need to be experts, but they just need to be asking the right questions to make that law the best law it can be. But they also need um, support from within uh, the Latour or, or, or from outside, wherever it comes, to be great constituency MPs as well, to make sure that they can be productive because it's a, it's a, for me, looking in, it's a sort of slightly odd timetable when they have, um, uh, they have to be in Napidor all day, every day for Monday to Friday, and then pack in everything in their constituents, uh, constituencies for at the weekends and juggle a family life as well in many ways. Now, they know they're in it for, they have to work really, really hard, and I don't doubt their dedication, but you've got to be practical, and they've got to actually just be able to have the tools to do the job because there's nothing, there's no substitute in terms of constituency work than being in your village, being in your town, your city, your rural area, speaking to the people that trusted in you and, and, and cast their vote for you. I always say that I have two ears and one mouth and I use it in that proportion. I, I listen more than I speak and that's really important. That's what you can do in your constituencies. Rules of law is crucial things and the most concerning in Myanmar is it right? I think it's the fundamental basis of um, a lawmaker is to make good law. Um, and it's not the only thing by any stretch of the imagination. There's lots of change that needs to happen. But actually, it's, the, it's, 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 it's core. It's actually, you know, it's what defines um, what is acceptable 
in in your society, what um, uh, what you agree, what freedoms you agree to give away um, to uh, for the good of um, uh, of society as a whole. Um, and so it's important that laws are defined clearly, that they're def defined so they can't be misinterpreted as well. As I say, you can't have, uh, there have been a number of examples, when people have been arrested for trumped up charges, for charges that have been, um, you know, the, the law's been abused basically. Um, and that's not acceptable. People need to have the freedom to know they can go around their everyday uh, lives without fear of arrest. Most of the people spot like that, the new government led by Dong San Suu Kyi have not experienced to rule the country and the legislation or the, of the government bodies to be the corporate good governance. How do you think? Is there needed training for the UNDP or the more for the training? Yeah, um, the, yeah, everybody needs more training, frankly. I need more training. And what will happen though um, with a new MP I remember what it was like when I first came in, is that you can have this week that they've just had, where they've had some really, really good in-depth training from, from very experienced politicians. Um, but that's very difficult to take in all in one go. So actually what you'll find, they will then need to start doing their work um, and then coming back, learning a little bit more, having master classes and these kind of things. Um, but that's no sign of weakness. That's not, and, and I, I really hope that members of the public will actually understand the the delicate position that those that the, the members of the Luto are, are, are in and give them the confidence um, to be able to have the space to get that training, that experience and do a great job. Thank you, sir. Is there anything else to add to my questions? Only that I'm so grateful for the warm welcome that I've had. It's been I've been so wonderfully received wherever I've been to in the country. It's been a, a particularly moving experience for me personally to, as I say, tread in the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, footprints of my father. But it's wonderful to, um, to be here at this amazing time in history and also to see the excitement and the anticipation in, um, in many people's faces. I just ask, as I say, apart from the confidence that um, members of the communities around the country play their role. I think that's really important in an open democracy that they play their role um, in making their local area, their ethnic state, a better place to, that everybody can live. I would like to tell you very thank you. I appreciate your taking time and this the recitals for my questions. Thank you. Jason Timberay. Jason Timberay.